Next, I would like to introduce Brennan Devaney, Director of Pro Bono Programs and Pro Bono Counsel at Skadden Arps. Brenna is a longtime champion of VALS and has inspired Skadden lawyers to work on many of our projects, including a highly successful partnership with the Dream School through our school-based children's project. VALS was formed by the city's major law firms and corporate law departments in 1984 in response to severe federal budget cuts to legal services for low-income Americans. Our pro bono relationships with over 70 law firms and companies are at the core of our history and unique capacity at VALS. Skadden is one of our most active law firms, including participation in longtime board service and significant pro bono contributions across the three plus decades. From that vantage point, we are fortunate to now hear from Brenna as she reflects upon VALS' impact under Marsha's tenure. Brenna, I'll turn it over to you now. Good morning and thank you so much, Sarah, for that really kind introduction. Certainly Skadden is very, very proud of its long history with Walls. So it's such a privilege to be, have been invited to talk with you all this morning about why I appreciate Walls now, before, and certainly will in the future. And of course, most importantly this morning, to lift up our community's admiration and thanks for, um, for and to Marsha uh, as we send her off in her, to her next adventure. Balls is the best of pro bono. Uh, from day one, its model has been to inform, direct, evaluate, leverage, encourage, and champion the resources of the private bar in service of under-resourced people and communities. Balls is the ultimate efficiency builder, efficiency finder, and VALS is the expert connector and matchmaker um, of people with needs and, and to the resources that will help them, of lawyers who care about things in this world, um, to the places and people and communities who need their assistance. VALS cultivates the absolute best in us. I think that you saw that showcase today in hearing from so many important community partners to VALS. I, I think you saw that in Roe's involvement uh, with VALS before his time at City and certainly now. I hope you see that in my involvement with, with VALS as well. And absolutely, we see what VALS brings out in terms of the best of people in Marsha's leadership in VALS. So let's, let's talk about Marsha for a few minutes. Um, in every role that I've known Marsha to take on, she is the piece of the puzzle that was needed to keep things moving forward. She's not the last piece, but she's, more so, she's something more like the corner piece or the foundational piece that you needed to find or you might have thought about giving up. And I think that she's done that foundational corner turning type work for Vols during her tenure as its leader. You, you see the impact of Marsha's savvy and sophisticated leadership in partnership with her dedicated and committed staff and the impact that has on the New York City community and beyond in this COVID moment where Marsha and the rest of the organization were able to pivot what they already did so well to increase the services through, a, through remote platforms, um, to create new specific initiatives and responses that helps people who are on the front line and really in need. We heard about quite a lot of that work today and it's, it's and so, such an honor to be a part of that and to witness and observe the ability that Vols under Marsh's leadership has had to be, play a, a, an important role during the pandemic. Marsha, much like she has in many moments before, was called upon by leaders and other stakeholders during the pandemic to do what she, like no other, can do. And that's to create dialogue across communities and stakeholders, to come up with solutions, to smooth the edges, um, and to make sure that we're working together in community to achieve the things that need to be done. I think she's able to do this not only because she has experience in almost every sector that law lawyers find ourselves in, and so she knows how to create those cross-sector dialogues, but also because she has remarkable expertise, compassion, kindness, dedication, and is one of the hardest working people I know. So that impact has been felt by all of us I know throughout this pandemic and before um, by Vols and the community that surrounds Vols. Marsha is someone who, through all of her um, expertise, kindness, compassion, and, and so on, creates pro bono magic. 
Vols is going to be okay, as it says farewell, fondly and with thanks to Marsha, because Vols is mighty and smart and strong and filled up with the most dedicated people I know. And Marsha is going to be okay as she goes on to do her magic at the New Hampshire School of Law. But I don't think anyone would argue with me when I say and believe that Vols and Marsha are better for their time together. I'm so glad that I had a front row seat for this, this time period in Vols history to witness Marsha's effective leadership and all that they accomplished together. So I would invite you now this morning to raise a coffee mug and uh, send Marsha off with uh, all of our thanks, lots of love, a hope that our paths cross over and over and over again, um, because we know she's on to great things and we know Vols will continue to do great things. I'd also like to send my own welcome and the law firm community welcome to Ian in his role as interim executive director as the organization recruits a permanent leader. I'm looking forward to working with Ian as well. And now I'd like to turn it over to Marsha, my very good friend and someone who I respect very, very much to, quote, to give us her own remarks. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Brenna.